that we want to talk about. Obviously, Sam Hornish Jr., we mentioned him a little bit earlier in the broadcast, but Ricky, not the way he wanted to get into this car, but this is a big opportunity for him. It is a tough set of circumstances with what happened to Brad Keselowski, but as an athlete, as a professional, you have to be prepared to seize the opportunity. That's what he's going to do. He's a professional, a great race car driver, and he feels like he deserves another shot at Cup. Running well tonight will help him do that. Todd Gordon's familiar with him. He already mentioned to us that he practiced here last year. So I expect he's going to have a great run. And then he'll be on his way to Pocono to be standby just in case uh, Brad needs relief over at that race tomorrow. Well, here we are. It's that time as we get ready to send it down trackside. Race number 22 of the NASCAR Nationwide Series under a hot, steamy night and in front of a full house. It's time to get the command to get this race underway. Now, for the most famous words in motorsports, Please welcome Vice President of U.S. Cellular Central Region, Kathy Hust. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. Well, Marty, following the May race here at Iowa, the 16 team of Trevor Bain and his Roush Fenway teammates, they all noticed a high amount of debris and rubber buildup on their front grill following the race. So in order to keep that grill cleaned and free of anything that may get on it, they've actually turned to a trick that some of the cup guys used to use at tracks like Martinsville good old-fashioned cooking spray. They've painted this spray all on the front grill, everywhere where obviously there isn't tape located. And they're hoping to keep it clean, free of debris, get that air flowing in through there, and maybe they can use it a little bit later to cook something. Jim Noble? <laughs> all right, let's 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 take a look at our over-the-wall reporter, and let's talk to him. It's Mark Hollywood Armstrong. He's the front tire changer on the number 66. It's Stephen Walls. Hey, Hollywood, this is a short track. We talked about how it races like a super speedway. How does that affect you guys down on pit road? Well, Marty, we certainly look at this racetrack as opportunity, and the drivers look at it as opportunity. But the word that we look for tonight down here on Pete Road is execution. Not only could there be a lot of changes going on with this race starting in the daylight and racing off into the night, but these pit crews have got to execute pit stops and also be prepared for any changes that might be thrown at them. And this crew right here is ready for that challenge tonight, guys. All right, you be safe down there. And uh, Rick DeBrule, you've got an update the last minute on the 33 of David Mayhew. Yeah, real quickly, it looked for a moment like there was a problem. He pulled off when everybody else was going out on the track. Turned out the cooling hose to his helmet was unattached. It's now fixed. But remember, he's a rookie. Never raced in this series. Not a good way to start your first race. Yeah, but boy, I'll tell you what. He has looked impressive. He's going to start 13th. All right, let's reset it for you. It's Elliot Sadler. He has chosen the inside lane. Trevor Bain alongside. Then it's row two. It's Sam Hornish Jr. and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Then Drew Herring, Justin Allgaier in row three. Jason Leffler, seventh. Kenny Wallace, eighth. Michael McDowell and Brian Scott round out your top ten. They come down the front straightaway. There's capacity crowds on the pit. This race is You see the enthusiasm of that crowd when they took off. Yeah, you see the enthusiasm of these <laughs> drivers as they whistle off of uh, turn two here. Kenny Wallace settling in on the low side. Wow, I, I, Trevor Bain on the high side here, I think has the advantage on the exit of four. And it looks like he is going to lead on lap number one with the number two of Elias Sadler right behind him. And here comes the 20 to a Sam Warners underneath him. Looking for second. Left side of your screen, that is Michael McDowell going around the two of Elliot Sadler. That puts McDowell in the fifth. And boy, I'll tell you what, the 20 of Drew Herring is coming underneath Elliot Sadler as well. The bleeding hasn't stopped yet for the two car. It, it actually very, it really surprises me because he won the pole by quite a margin. And typically a car that's that fast, it'll run really good on the, on the beginning of a green flag stretch and then start to fade. This is the reverse. I think that uh, something strange here, maybe air pressure. Okay, we can tell you Jeff Green in the 44 is taking it behind the wall. Tim Andrews is just turning behind the wall right now. So two cars have parked in here. Looking at our race leader, Sam Hornish Jr., only the fifth race in the Nationwide Series. Sam has led, and the most laps he's led in any race is eight. That was back at Charlotte in May of 2008. And guess what, guys? He'll equal that this time by. Yeah, very happy for him. We talked about capitalizing on the opportunity. He's doing that. His car looked a little loose to me when he was underneath Trevor Bain. Getting out front, he can choose his lane. He can make that wide arc I was referring to in practice. And as the fuel burns off, it'll tighten up. I think he's in great shape up front here. Two more guys are taking it behind the wall. Johnny Chapman and Mr. Harmon 
in the 74. Let's go a little deeper in the field. You got uh, Blake Cook right there in 25th with uh, Timmy Hill in the 75 trying to get underneath him. Marty, they've been doing this for a while. You know, they, we, we went to break and we were watching these guys battle side by side. Again, this is what the racetrack can give you, but you got to give some credit to Blake Cook. He's on the outside for several laps. Derek Cope also in this battle, and all Ooh. of a sudden the 31, Justin Allgaier has got problems, and we have caution on the track. One of the four are going for the dash for cash, 100,000. All right, let's go on board, and you can see there's damage on the right side. Heading into turn one, and the right front goes down. Just as it loads up in the middle of the corner. That's actually turn three. Got to slow down a lot, but not enough. Sam Hornish Jr. and David Mayhew stayed out. They're on the front row. Hornish took the high side. We're back to green flag racing. Sadler, McDowell, Wallace, and Scott. Whoa, and Bain tries to go underneath, gets a little loose. Side by side with Mayhew. Trevor Bain kind of snuck down there getting into turn one. We've got the, the yellow flag out here at Iowa Speedway as the 0-2 of Jamie Dick has tagged the wall. And there, the 14 has now gotten into him because the 14 of Eric McClure had a tire going down. So two unrelated incidents end up colliding together. That's, and, that's pretty exciting there. Well, let's go back. In fact, the, our spotters are telling us that before we picked it up, yeah, this this is well after he's already tagged the wall and the 14 had a tire on the right front that was going down and they end up into each other. Yeah, Jamie Dick is trying to get off the wall and get down to the apron and uh, you could almost see where a spotter right here is saying, hey, hey, he's low, he's low because he tries to turn back to the right, I think. I don't know. Well, <laughs> pretty and just... our leader, Sam Hardish, Harnish, skipped a couple heartbeats when all that was happening right in front of him. Yeah, remember, he and uh, David Mayhew stayed out. They were 24 laps to the bad side. And he actually dodges a bullet in this uh, double car deal between the 14 and the 02. Keep an eye on the 22. There is Sam. And there's the 14 underneath. And then all of a sudden, what's going to happen in front of Sam? And Sam makes the right move and comes back down underneath. Wow, that's really unusual. All right, let's reset it for you on the front row. It's Michael McDowell and Carl Edwards. As McDowell is your race leader. Then Leffler and Wallace in row number two. Then in row number three, there you see Kenny Wallace and Scott, row four, Stenhouse Jr. and Wise. And here we are, back to green flag racing. from Carl and that allows the 18 to clear. It looked like Carl Edwards got a little tight, like he lost the front end of the car. Here and comes Jason Leffler underneath the 66. You see him running long. Oh, gets into the side of Stephen Wallace. Marty, you reminded us about the little tension between the two a few weeks ago. Yeah, it's, we've had those uh, moments, Kentucky. And here we go for the battle for the lead. Carl Edwards. He said he had a pretty decent race car early. Well, he's showing it right now as he now gets around. And here comes the crossover as McDowell's going to try and take it right back. Uh, Carl Edwards is having a really difficult time in the middle of the corner on both ends. It's very easy to overdrive this car. So, you know, he, he mentioned earlier he was tight. Tight really, really catches up with you in the middle of the corner when you need the car to rotate, transition. So Carl has not officially led a lap yet at the stripe as McDowell was able to get back around him. But maybe this time it'll happen for him. Marty, we've got to give some attention to Michael McDowell here, though. You know, we're used to the 18 car being up front, but it's outstanding that he's matching laps here with Carl Edwards. Flat right front will tell you on Justin Allgaier's 31. He's back on pit road. There he is. This has turned into a disastrous night for this team. He got into the wall also there with the flat. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has just taken the lead from Carl Edwards as the caution has come out as we've had contact the 01 of Mike Wallace. After having cowboys and aliens on the car for weeks, he picks up sponsorship from the Iowa 80 truck stop just down the road a piece and Unfortunately, looked like he may have uh, had that right front situation that we've seen before tonight. Let's go back and show you exactly what happened on the lead change, our fifth of the night. Yeah, Ricky actually drove a car length deeper into turn three, got to Carl's bumper and just finished him off on the front stretch getting into turn one, showing a lot of muscle. The lights come on at Iowa Speedway. Cars come up to speed. 
green flag in the air. We're racing again in Iowa. Really good start for Mayhew. You're going to see uh, the value of four tires versus two as they whistle down into turn one. Carl was able to hang on his right rear, which prevented Mayhew from drifting up. Ricky Sten out. Whoa, loose. Mayhew wiggles. Yeah, turns into the, the corner there, Marty, and gets a little loose on corner entry. And here comes Ricky Stenhouse trying to pounce on him and take advantage. It is a great save. Really, really good job by David Mayhew. Mayhew Stri driving like a veteran. He is really impressed, and especially when you realize he's teammate to Elliot Sadler, and Sadler stuck back and forth. Well, right now, you can see Edwards and Stenhouse are trying to pull away from third place, and here we go side-by-side -side action. Could we make it three wide going down the back stretch? Trevor Bain, here comes the 88 to Eric Almirola. He's trying to get up into the mix, and... Oh, is this going to get tight? Typically, the driver in the middle will yield. It's just a, it's just an uncomfortable position to put yourself in. Michael McDowell did that. We're getting word that the 16 of Trevor Bain may be having an issue, so we're going to keep it right here. He's running fifth. Shannon, what have you got? Well, I, I just mentioned in that up to speed, Marty, that he was developing a vibration. It's gotten really bad. The team told him it was his decision as to whether he wanted to come down. He said it's the right rear over the radio just now and told his team he is going to bring it down and they're going to make a four-tire change. What a deal for Trevor Bain. Of course, he had a strong run going last week at Lucas Oil Raceway. They blew the motor and now this. So they're going to bring it down and we will get an update to see if there's any issues with those tires when they come off the car. Now, the 16 of Trevor Bain now finds himself two laps down and 21st position, and it's time for show and tell with Shannon Spade. Well, actually, we're not able to show the tire right now, guys, but I did check in with the team. Sorry, I know. We love show and tell on the nationwide races, but I was able to check in with the team, and it was a loose wheel. It was a loose right rear, and they did change all four tires, and he has not complained since he got back on the race track. We know you tried, Shannon, but they're, they're so protective sometimes on these things. I really admire Trevor Bain. You know, that is a really difficult thing for a driver to do. Pit under green when you feel a vibration, but they never cure themselves. When they start to vibrate, they, they never get better. But don't do anything that's going to jeopardize what you've got. And right now, what he has is third place. And we've got trouble for Sam Hornish. It looked like the car just went headed for the wall, and he has got major issues. Right front tire again. Same thing. This track is so abusive on the right front tire and that and that tire failed in the middle of turn three and four Sam did an outstanding job keeping it off the wall I'm sure we're gonna get a replay in a minute let's go back and take another look no yellow condition yet so you're going back to the accelerator here and the right front fails and you're along for the ride you can only turn the steering wheel so much you have to decelerate you're in, the, you're in the dirty part of the racetrack. That was a great job. And the caution has now come out, our fourth of the day, and there is Sam making his way down pit road with a shredded right front. Tough break again for Hornish as he had driven an excellent race. And while we're under our fourth caution, Sam Hornish Jr. had to come back in because running at pace speed, we thought what rubber was on fire from the shredded. He had to come back in because it was getting worse and looking more and more like the situation we had last week with Justin Allgaier. Yeah, and what you got here, I believe, guys, is that the brake duct caught on fire and uh, and then the tire coming apart filled up the rotor. Then when he went back out, he introduced more air to it, which created like a, a torch. This is the end result. When no. Carl Edwards was running beside him on yellow, he said, he said there was some fluid coming out. He said something was leaking out. So, you know, it, obviously it wasn't brake fluid because he was able to stop in his pit box. So it might be something else. Well, we told you Justin Allgaier has already got an issue and he is uh, out of the running. But now it is Jason Leffler. He's in 20th position, one lap down, back in pit road. Jim, what is going on? Marty, as you can see, beating and banging underneath the right front of that 38 car for Jason Leffler. We told you about the splitter damage. From my vantage point, the splitter looks okay. The damage is further underneath that right front wheel, possibly with the, some of the tie rods. They are pulling that fender out as well. Now Leffler revs the engine, and he will pull away. Well, you can't see it from your side off pit row, but he's obviously scraped the wall as well, and that created part of this issue. This capacity crowd on their feet at Iowa Speedway. Pace car has pulled off up front. It's Edwards and Stenhouse. They've been up there all night long. We're back to green and white. Stenhouse spun the tires, coming to the green. On the outside of David Mayhew. Not only the dash for cash, this is the dash for the race win. 
now as everybody thinks they may be able to go the distance. Ricky they clears him off of turn four. Take a look at the number two, Elliot Sadler. All of a sudden, the two cars come back to life. Remember when he was stuck in that last cycle? He was 15th, couldn't go forward, didn't fall backwards. And here he is after a great pit stop, running in the top five. Top breaker Michael Waddell, he reported a vibration in the wheel on that last pit stop. Remember, this is the same car he led a bunch of laps with back in the May race. Michael Waddell's been having a great top 10 run. His crew chief, Jason Ratcliffe, cheerleading all the way. But this loose wheel, this vibration, this unscheduled pit stop, gonna really hurt the 18. And you saw on the left side of your screen, Wimmer got loose, ran up the track, so action all over this place. And here comes Stenhouse saying, Carl, do you remember when I passed you late in May and went on to win this race? I'd like to do it again. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, Carl's unable to stay to the bottom of the racetrack. I think Ricky Stenhouse is faster on the short run. Carl seems to, to even out on the long run, meaning 30, 40 laps. He just completes the pass here. Well, last time he Slides did Slides up a little bit of <laughs> And here whoa. comes that crossover by Carl. These guys, you'd think this was the last whoa. lap. Oh, and they touch. Is it the last lap? No. <laughs> when they did it in May, it was with 18 to go. We've got 82 to go. Wow, look at look Stenhouse. At this. And they are using up these tires. And here comes David Mayhew saying, hey, you guys keep beating on it. I'll pass at least one of you. David Mayhew has done this all night. Just gone about his business, capitalizes. Well, a little, a little contact here. <laughs> I might have to move you just a little bit, David, if I can get back to you. Ricky really charges the corner. He drives deeper in the corner than anybody in the field tonight. You wonder why this track sells out? This is the reason, folks, that, that we, every time we come here, while all this is going on, Trevor Bain has just pulled on the pit road. There he is. He's now listed as one lap down. Could be worse. We're seeing a lot of loose wheels tonight. Yeah, we're seeing, uh, we're seeing some strange things, that's for sure. That took a long time, and it looked, well, a little confusion. Now they're going to go to the left side tires. Let's go to Shannon. Shannon? Well, a moment ago, Trevor Bain said that right rear was still really feeling not, it was not feeling good on the racetrack. He actually came down pit road that last pit stop, guys, and he had another loose wheel on the right side, so we'll definitely get down there and check to see if this could be the third one for the 16 tonight. Well, and one other thing we just found out, he was posted by NASCAR because he pitted after the wave around. And so uh, he had to come back in again anyway. So and now they're going to post him again, we're just being told. So his night is going south as he is three laps down. He's going to have to do another pass through, according to what we've been told by NASCAR officials. So another rough night. Remember, the engine blew up on him late in the race at Indianapolis. And there is third place, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., 1.5 seconds behind. And listen in on Ricky's radio after that side-by-side uh, -side action with his teammate. Get to him. And that's all he said. So I, I have this feeling that maybe Ricky's not happy that Carl re-signed with Roush Fenway. What do you got, Shannon? Well, I think he was just really upset with how that, that last lap between the interaction between those two guys went. But his crew chief, Mike Kelly, came on, just told him to relax. And even Jack Roush got on the radio moments ago, guys, told Ricky, just be patient. And that's what he's going to do. Guys, there's a caution on the racetrack. Yes, our fifth caution of the day has come out here at the Iowa Speedway. Waiting for the official reason why nobody has made contact with the wall. So we had some earlier reports of some debris out on the track. Take a look at the front of the field here at Iowa Speedway. Michael McDowell, remember, he pitted under green. He's going to take the wave around. Who's the race leader? The 62 of Michael Annette, the only car on the lead lap that stayed out. So he is going to take the race lead. Now watch the left rear. Yeah. When the jack drops, the driver leaves. He did that. Crew chief Mike Beam comes on. Back it up, stop, back it up. We didn't We didn't get all the lug nuts on, apparently. Watch the left rear tire changer, goes back to the lugs, hits two, now you can go. And let's uh, shift gears over to the six because we followed up on their radio conversation. I know you're frustrated, man. I don't, I don't want to see anybody race you like that, but we're big picture racing here. We gotta take care of our stuff. Ten four, but we're gonna stand our ground too. Jason Leffler got back on the lead lap, as we mentioned. He's back at 17th. All right, here we go. Back to green flag racing. Michael and that stayed out. He was our pole sitter. And he's going for the lead. You know, last time he got to make a big swing at it, and he's got to stay on the lead lap. 
they got it 90 percent there if he was able to make that last adjustment they need right now he's got himself in a heck of a position remember the dash for cash a net in the 62 and here comes reed Sorensen in the 32 those two blue spoilers and Sorensen is going to take the spot yes it looks like he's got him he does hundred thousand dollar pass that's it right there this has been some of the best racing of the year outstanding two and three wide all night Look at the low line, the 60 of Carl Edwards. It took Edwards 22 laps to move from 17th to 10th at the start of the race. We still have 58 to go here. Under our sixth caution here at Iowa Speedway, you're looking at what is left of Blake Cook's Dodge as he tagged not one wall, but two. Yep, right, right front. front goes down and then when he hit I think he lost the brakes Marty big impact typically you know it can break the caliper off hard hit there yeah that's just the first one that's the yeah. first one yeah this one is a harder hit yeah look at this it's a lot harder hit oh, man that hurts uh no safer barriers <laughs> The uh, safer barriers are all the way around the outside of the track. Well, yeah. He's thankful he had it out there, and then he. Yeah. But he's looking. See the rear, the rear brakes never locked up, and I think uh, he probably broke the caliper on that first impact. Let's take you back a few laps ago, as this was Ricky Stenhouse and Carl Edwards going after each other. Yeah. Ricky uh, drives deep in the corner, makes the pass, but carries too much speed in the corner, allows the car to slide up. Carl's close enough to make him lose. Does the crossover, comes off the corner, and just runs out of room. Yeah. He, uh, he was really hard in the gas is why he ran out yeah, of room. Yeah, I mean, Ricky smokes in there. Now, Ricky's loose now. I mean, he slid right up in front of Carl. So, you know, it's not like Carl made him loose. And then <laughs> Ricky didn't was still gathering it up when they got together. I mean, I didn't see where Carl really did a lot there. All right, let's listen in on Ricky's radio. Now remember here, you got the best car. Your lap times are better than anybody out there. I don't want you folks on anything but getting out of the lead and checking out. Now that's a team trying to keep a 23-year-old focused on the ball. Well, we're going to find out what happens. Pace cars pulled off. Fans here at Iowa the Speedway. Standing start. Carl Edwards is, is is really capitalizing. Sticks to the bumper of. Elliott gets a little wiggly and turns a little loose in turn one and two. And look at Stenhouse shoot out. He's going to try and make a run underneath on the 33. And oh, here we go. Side by side with the 60. Oh, Mayhew gets a little nudge from behind. Runs him up towards the wall. That was quite the move for Ricky's that part was, there. Uh, that, that was a spontaneous move. And that, that's typical of a young driver. That was impressive. The top three are trying to check out on the rest of the field. Down the back stretch, side by side. Stenhouse down low. Stenhouse driving deep in the corner here. Stenhouse and Carl can't even see that two car right now. They're just thinking about each other. Yeah, that can lead you into trouble, can't no, it? Oh, that can lead you into trouble. Yeah, you got you, you got to get over this. It, it, I think that Carl knows if Ricky clears him, he's gone. Carl's right. driving really, really hard. Well, and Stenhouse is now cleared, and now he's going down the back straightaway. And here, wow. a little more contact. And Sadler gets out of the way. He may lose a spot to Josh Wise. This is an interesting battle. Yeah, let's check back in on the race lead because it is starting to tighten up. Carl has the fastest car on the track right now as he has closed the gap down to a half second. It had been wider than that. Carl is using up every bit of racetrack, Kenny. He's moving around. He's doing everything he can. You can see running a little higher line, getting in the corner. He lost a little bit on that lap. It's six tenths of a second with four to go. Got some traffic up ahead. It's just a lot harder to be up here and watch than it is looking through the windshield. <laughs> <laughs> well, the two lap vehicles in front are Charles Lewandowski in the 40 and the 14 of Eric McClure. That's McClure that he's getting around right now. So Stenhouse is cleared. Here comes Carl. We're down to three laps to go. I don't think Carl has anything for it. And Carl had to lift off turn two. He didn't, uh, he caught the 14 in the wrong place. Just two laps remaining. There's Carl right behind. It's now seven tenths of a second. So in the last two laps, Stenhouse has actually lengthened the lead. He might have got a phone call on the radio. 
said, hey, we got to go just a little bit faster. You got to give Ricky Stenhouse a lot of credit. You know, it's it's not easy to top Carl Edwards at a track, and he's apparently he's going to do it for the second time at Iowa. Here we go. Seven eighths of a mile to go for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. He picked up his first career win here back in May. And all he has to do now is negotiate two more corners, and he's going to do it again at Iowa Speedway. He dominated last week, Marty. Didn't get the win, but it looks as though he's got a little redemption in mind here tonight. He, oh, look out as he has a tire situation. Here comes Edwards right wow. into it. They cross the line, and guess who wins the race? Stenhouse. Well, thanks to Carl Edwards. Gave him Finish. Sadler comes across the line third. Wise fourth. Alma roll the fifth. And Reed Sorensen wins the hundred grand in the dash for cash. All right, take another look at this. Okay, all of a sudden, no, I don't think no, that's the tire. Engine. That's an engine. That's the engine. You're that's, right. Wow. And I wonder if Carl got into the field and he couldn't steer. I would think so, because you'd think he could have missed it, but it, it's hard to say from up here. You're right, though. It looked like it a tire the, from there. He did a good job of just keeping. Oh, uh, he had smoke and oil. I guarantee I it. Think he so just couldn't miss him. All right, let's just listen yeah. this time from Carl's perspective. You could hear the rear tire spinning, and, and you couldn't see anything, and neither could Carl. No, and he couldn't steer. All right, let's show you this finish. The margin of victory is 66 one thousandth of a second. Well, <laughs> he wasn't beside him, he was under him. So, yeah, that's Carl talking to Mike Kelly and explaining his end. There's Jack also. Thanks for the push. Not too often. Uh, that's the first time in 30 years that I've been doing this that I've seen that happen. Well, in drag racing, it can happen. The, the front tires just were sliding, and uh, I hoped by the time I got to him that he would be out of the way. That was my only hope to win the race, but I don't think uh, I don't think anyone's ever finished one two with two torn up race cars like that. So congrats to Jack. I got to thank Fast and All for being a part of this. It was a huge day for us. It's fun to come up here and race here in front of this crowd, and um, and you know a, a great finish for for Ricky. No car down here in Victory Lane. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. took a ride around on one of the debris trucks with his crew, but that doesn't mean there's not a celebration, guys. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. sweeps here at Iowa. Okay, first question, last lap, what happened to the car? Uh, motor was uh, kind of messing up on us there a little bit. We'll have to uh, look at it at the shop, but uh, awesome job to this team. Uh, you know, we couldn't do it without these guys working on this thing. We work hard as uh, anybody out there working the shop, all the buck body shop guys, uh, everybody at Roush Yates Engines, uh, the good Lord above. He's, uh, he's helped us through a lot of this, and I uh, got to thank Nationwide Insurance for uh, giving us this opportunity to come out here and put on a show for uh, these awesome fans. <sighs> Whew, that's cool. Uh, for all these fans out here, this is, uh, this is a way to win right here with all these fans. Ricky, one of the stories of your race was Carl Edwards, the contact between your teammate. He just said moments ago he thinks maybe you were a little aggressive. Was it a case of hard racing or something else? No, I was aggressive there at the end. Uh, you got to do what you got to do to win. I wasn't going to let another one slip by us. Um, he kind of ran us up the racetrack there. Uh, turn four when he, when I got by him, he, he crossed us over, ran us up the racetrack. So uh, I wasn't about to back down. What was it like managing those expectations inside the, or the emotions inside the car tonight? Uh, if you ask Mike Kelly, it was tough. And Mike Kalinoff, they've, uh, they try to, they try to calm me down as much as they can. I get a little flustered sometimes, but um, you know, I just wish we had Black Wingus beefing and, and Cargill on this thing. Uh, we got a white Mustang. Hopefully it won't be white for the rest of the year.